As you probably know, because I mention it in every other video, I have a dog. His name is Indy, and we've been friends for five years now. And in that time, we've had a lot of back and forth while trying to figure out a form of exercise that both of us like. For instance, I enjoy running, which Indy hates because he would much rather either go way faster or just stop and eat grass. I like surfing and swimming, while Indy considers water one of his greatest nemeses. I like biking, and I even got a little trailer to pull Indy along behind me, but he spends most of his time in the trailer just screaming, like, I hate this. It turns out that I don't derive much enjoyment from Indy's favorite activities, like rolling in cow poop or eating the cotton out of stuffed animals. But we finally found a hobby we both love, which is hiking. We go out several times a week and explore the many dog-friendly trails that are around the Bay Area. And it's great. Lakes and rivers and waterfalls, black bears in the zoo, uh, hidden graffiti walls. Every hike is a fun new adventure for us. So you can understand why I was alarmed to read this Washington Post headline, Uh, Dogs peeing and pooping in nature reserves disrupt ecosystems, Belgian study finds. Great, we finally found a healthy activity we both enjoy, and it turns out we're destroying our local habitats. God damn it. I already knew that dogs can be quite harmful to delicate ecosystems. When I first adopted Indy, I lived on a beach right next to a bird sanctuary, and dogs were barred from all the beaches on the island in order to protect important breeding and nesting areas for shorebirds, including the endangered least tern. Dogs are predators, uh, and they can scare away or hurt or even kill birds purposely or accidentally. So it's important to keep them on leash and far away from habitats where they might cause damage. But that isn't what this article is about. This article is about a new study from Belgian researchers who are concerned about how dogs can impact our environment by simply peeing and pooping all over it. Now, I have a few issues with this study, the biggest of which is that they didn't actually take samples of the environments that they studied uh, to determine whether or not dogs were actually causing the damage that they claim. Uh, It's all just kind of assumed, and the assumptions that they made don't necessarily reflect reality. So the big takeaway up front uh, is that you should not let this study stop you from taking your well-trained and leashed dog out on hiking trails where dogs are allowed. But I do want to nip in the bud a few ideas that might occur to the average person upon first reading this headline. For instance, you know, well, nature is full of animals pooping and peeing everywhere. Squirrels don't have dedicated bathrooms and sewage systems, do they? So what's it matter if my dog pees and poops everywhere too? Ecosystems are, to a point, kind of self-contained and self-correcting. When a bunch of plants and animals spend a few millennia evolving together in the same place, there's a sort of uneasy balance. The local plants and fungi and insects use up the nutrients that are deposited by the animals, uh, which include herbivores and omnivores and carnivores. And, uh, you know, the herbivores will feed on those plants. Uh, the carnivores will feed on those herbivores feeding on those plants. And it's all sort of connected. But then humans come along and introduce a large amount of nutrients and bacteria and other stuff. And that's not necessarily good. You know, we feed our dogs at home outside of the ecosystem. And then we bring them into the ecosystem to deposit those nutrients. Theoretically, that could really upset the balance, killing certain species or introducing or attracting new invasive species that could cause additional damage. So it's not just like fertilizer and unqualified good. Uh, if you, like me, use quarantine to get really into plants, um, then you may have already learned this. More is not always better. Um, It's even true of things like water and sunlight. And so, of course, it's also true about things like nutrients. 
You probably learned in grade school that nitrogen is very important for plant growth, but too much nitrogen can burn your plant's leaves, cause their stems to weaken, and inhibit the growth of their roots. Some plants love nitrogen, some don't. And it's the same with phosphorus. Uh, too much and plants tend to die. Both phosphorus and nitrogen are introduced to the soil via animal waste. It's possible, therefore, for dogs to contribute negatively to an ecosystem if they're depositing enough nitrogen and phosphorus in areas where those nutrients cause harm. So, are they? <laughs> uh, to find out, these researchers took a doggy census at four different nature preserves around Belgium, finding about 1,600 dogs in total, of whom two-thirds were leashed and one-third were off-leash. Then the researchers looked at previous research to figure out the average of how much a dog pees and poops on one walk without any consideration for the dog's size or the diet they're fed or the length of time they're walked. Uh, they just took the average. And then they took the average of the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus contained in a dog's pee and poop in order to estimate how much nitrogen and phosphorus these dogs might be putting into the ecosystem. Again, they did not take any samples to confirm or deny these estimates. So you see an issue already, I assume. For a start, dog walkers can quite easily pick up their dog's poop. They don't always do it, which is infuriating, but they can. And when they do, they take away 97% of the phosphorus and 56% of the nitrogen that their dog otherwise would be contributing to the environment. That leaves us with nutrients that dogs deposit purely through their urine, which is not so easy to collect. Uh, that's a negligible amount of phosphorus and about 11 pounds of nitrogen deposited per dog per year per hectare, assuming that literally every dog they saw at the park returns to pee at that park once per day every day for a year, uh, a number that pales in comparison to the amount of nitrogen that enters ecosystems every day due to agricultural runoff. Now I'll say that being a distant second doesn't mean that it's not a substantial amount, I'm just trying to put it into perspective for you. According to the author of this study, agricultural runoff is nearly five times worse. The authors do admit that if a dog is on a six foot leash, they can only deposit these nutrients on and around the main path. Speaking as someone who enjoys taking my dog for walks off leash um, so that he can run around uh, and kind of go at his own pace, I can say that he rarely leaves the path by more than a few feet and almost exclusively squirts his pee on posts and debris piles and signs that are immediately next to the path. Now, not all dogs are the same, but if even a quarter of the off-leash dogs in this study behave the same way, that takes another huge bite out of the estimated numbers that these researchers used. Since they didn't take any samples, we have to look at other studies to determine real world results. They actually cite one study that did take samples. Uh, dog urine has acute impacts on soil chemistry in urban green spaces. In 2020, researchers in Finland examined the soil composition in urban parks, forests, and other green spaces. They confirmed that dogs uh, do contribute a significant amount of nitrogen to the soil, but only on trees and signs right next to the walking paths. They found that forests were, contrary to their own hypothesis, the least impacted by dogs' nitrogen deposits. The authors of the recent Belgian study suggest that dog owners be further compelled to pick up their dog poop, Obviously, that should be done. Uh, but also that some parks should simply be made off limits to dogs entirely. While I absolutely agree that dogs aren't fit to go everywhere they want, um, I certainly don't want Indy to be responsible for cock blocking a least turn. I do think the Finnish researchers are a bit more pragmatic. Not only did they actually evaluate samples from the field, but their results led them to suggest a better alternative. 
designing park systems that take advantage of the fact that dogs like to pee on objects near the trail, especially if another dog has already peed on it. Set up little pee stations for them with drainage. Boom, problem solved. I I mean, maybe, you know, Indy is a male dog and as such, he is cursed with the overwhelming desire to pee just a few precious drops on everything. You know, a stick here, a tree there, a weird rock down there. Um, This is known as marking and he can't really help it. He wants all of the other dogs to know that this is his forest. I'm never going to convince him to fully empty his bladder over one spot with drainage, no matter how appealing that spot is. But that's also yet another complication for the Belgian study. Sure, you know, the average dog may pee 184 milliliters per walk, but surely it matters uh, to the plants in the soil whether all of that is dumped in one spot at once or whether it's sprinkled throughout a two-mile path that can wind its way through an entire forest. While I'm not blown away by this Belgian study, which is really just a mathematical model built on a lot of assumptions, I do think more research into this would be fantastic. Does a tiny amount of pee cause a problem? How does the nitrogen move around when it rains? Is the impact less or more than the baseline impact of carving out a dirt or rocky path through an otherwise untouched forest for humans to wander along? And is it worth redesigning our parks or instituting tougher rules? Or would we see a greater impact by enforcing existing rules, like making sure people pick up after their dogs or ensuring that farms aren't polluting wild areas with their runoff? I'm willing to change my mind if we get more data in, but as of right now, I think that the physical and psychological benefits of going out into nature with your best friend are way more important than the ecological drawback of your best friend occasionally peeing on an unappreciative plant.